so let's see the anatomy of the great financial crisis of 2007-9 let's see the notes first so i've divided it into few parts 2001 to 2006 6 to 8 and 8 onwards what all happened so what happened before the 2007-9 crisis that in the first part was that credit growth was increasing because this means that uh people were getting more access to loans this was because interest rates were kept at historically low levels and housing prices was increasing and people assumed it will keep increasing forever so and it was obviously a bubble because uh, nothing keeps increasing on going on and on forever unlike gold i mean it has been increasing for so many decades now but generally housing prices people assumed that it will keep on increasing forever and what they did was that they took loans at those historically cheap levels and they kept investing that money in houses they took mortgages and kept investing that money in houses and then the leverage was increasing because like i explained the securitization pooling of loans for the cdos was increasing so leverage was also increasing to a huge extent the capacity of credit for the banks was increasing because now they can just originate distribute those loans and then they keep can keep giving those loans but the risk management was poor they they did not they were getting greedy and they just uh, originated and dis- distributed shit subprime loans so then bankers and investors also looking for higher returns they give out subprime mortgages and subprime cdos uh, they created subprime cdos as well on those products they package the cash flows using spvs using the originate to distribute model like i have explained to you before and they give out mortgages at higher teaser rate teaser rate means you can repay this mortgage after let's say you can start paying your mortgages after x n years after 2 years let's say so technically for the first 2 years your housing price is free so let's understand it let me add a page and explain it to you so you invest 5 million dollar uh, for example let's say you invest 5 million dollars yourself you take a 45 million dollar mortgage and you buy a house worth 50 million okay you get this for on 45 million you will have to pay interest after let's say 2 years so for 2 years technically your loan is free in 2 years if the house price increases to let's say 60 million you sell your house then and there you repay that 45 million and you earn a 10 million profit 10 million profit on your on this investment and people thought they can keep doing this forever because if the price falls if the price becomes let's say 40 million the, they will forfeit this 5 million and say bank i can only give you back 40 million keep this 40 million Family and loss. I can't do anything. So it was technically a put a a a call option, and this five million was the premium paid. So that was and that was it was as simple as that. People were doing this, and banks thought that since prices will keep increasing forever, they can keep repackaging those loans, those loans, and keep creating CDOs. <clears throat> and then. in the last phase towards 2006 the bubble started bursting prices started falling because people started defaulting in huge numbers people started defaulting huge 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 numbers slowly and slowly and the lower tranches of the cdos so like i explained to you there were different tranches of the cdos like um uh, even in one cdo some people will earn 3% some 4% and some 5% obviously whoever is earning higher return will have to face the losses first so these lower tranches absorbed the losses starting with and people started defaulting on mortgages interest rates started rising after that and obviously there was a duration mismatch like i have told you many times because banks were funding these cdos banks were also purchasing these cdos they were funding this using overnight repos so ultimately what what all was happening the mortgages were facing losses banks were facing losses there was liquidity issue because mbs was ill liquid like i had explained in liquidity risk lending was going down because banks don't want to lend anymore they have become cautious and then obviously there has to be government support they have to ask the fed for money after they have completely completely destroyed the system and wiped out 5 trillion from the world in one day mbs values fell people who had financed the mbs investment with the uh, asset backed commercial paper or you can say the overnight repos they went bust 
uh, like Lehman Brothers, one of them. And it's not just in USA that this happened. Uh, banks in UK and Europe, even they were invested in the CDOs and CMOs. So like we had done in the previous reading, Northern Rock, even that went bust because of CDO and CMO. And then there was London's bank as well, the German bank. And ultimately, this resulted in a global recession. And that was the crux of the crisis, which has been explained in a very long way over here. You can read through it. Teaser rates, investment vehicles. Yeah, like I said, like I told you before, ninja loans, no income, no job, no asset. People did not have anything. They, they are getting loans. You should, uh, I, I told you, you should watch that movie, The Big Shot. Then there were liar loans. Like people have to give evidence that they will be able to repay the loan. But banks did not care. Banks did not take any evidence from them. And even if they took, they did not verify the, that evidence. Okay, loss waterfall structure. So let me explain loss waterfall structure once. So like, like I had explained, they, they took different A, B, C level mortgages and they packaged different B levels into A. They did package different C levels into A. Now, even in this packaging, even in one whole MB, one whole MBS, the top 30%, let's say, was called a prime level or the first level, they earned 3%, 30%, then different levels, then different levels. And the lowest one was most risky. So let's say it earned 6% return. And this was the structure of the MBS and it was called a water wall structure. This means that if there is a loss, they will face the losses first then they will face the losses and then they will face the losses as simple as that short term funding and systemic risk so again repurchase, repurchase agreements like i've explained i'll show it over here what it means so the first step in this is this is bank a which has to borrow money what they do is they give you a security worth 100 million okay and let's say Okay, you give me 100 million now. Okay, that's all. And after the end of the period, I will give you back 100 plus interest, 100.8 million, and you give me back my security. But what if the value of the security falls 100 million? So this bank P, what they do is they put a haircut. It's called a haircut. They say, you give me 100 million, I'll give you only 80. That, that, that's the system and it is prevalent even now, even if you pledge your stocks, that is prevalent. So what was happening was that this bank was pledging CDOs. They were, they were giving CDOs as security, which was inherently very risky. And the value for this was falling. So this bank, they increased haircuts to very abnormally high levels. And again, this caused a liquidity crisis. And lastly, there was the central bank intervention. The Fed intervened and they provided long-term loans by high, high, secured by highly collateral, uh, collateralized loans. They allowed uh, investment banks to borrow directly from the Fed as a starter for the first time. They provided liquidity against highly liquid, liquid assets. And some assets were uh, acquired by government organizations like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And then the four uh, implementations were the term auction facility that is they provided funds to depository institutions the second one is primary dealer credit facility that fed lent money to primary dealers via repos the third one is government bailout of fred fannie mae and freddie mac because at, at the end after all of this even fannie mae and freddie mac they've started to fail and the last one was troubled asset relief program purchasing toxic assets from financial institutions starting october 8 and uh, another one that is mentioned probably later was that even foreign banks were allowed with uh, branches in the US were allowed to borrow from the Fed. And that was how the Fed saved, so to say, save the economy. And I don't think anyone was prosecuted, but new laws were developed like we have done earlier, Dodd-Frank Act, etc., which are implemented. And the system is much more robust now. But let's see what happens in the future. And I will link these three pages for you in the comments again, as usual. Thank you.